Too. I hope no one finds out I snuck you into my room. They'll hear me if I'm too loud. <gasps> Wait, I didn't mean it like that. Don't get the wrong idea, okay? Hey, you don't need to say it. Jeez. Whatever. Oh, right. I wanted to give you something. And this is for you. You know what it is, right? It's the strap from my cell phone. I got it at the opening ceremony for the Moonlight Bridge. It's been my special keepsake for years now, because my dad bought it for me. I used to talk to the little charm attached to it when I was alone in my room. <laughs> you must think I'm nuts, huh? But ever since I got to know you, I've stopped talking to it. It means a lot to me. So I should explain why I'm giving it to you. I'm only gonna say this once, okay? I... I love you. That's it. I am thou. Thou art I. The bomb thou hast nurtured hath finally matured. The innermost power of the Lover's Arcana hath been set free. We now bestow upon you the ultimate form of the Lover's within thyself. Maybe we can spend some time together. Just the two of us. In fact, would it be alright if I jumped the gun a bit and took some of that time right now? I'm not ready to say goodnight yet. <laughs> I'm blushing, aren't I? I'm sorry to ask this so suddenly, but can you come with me? There's something we need to discuss. Uh, you and all of us, or just him? Just him for now. 
Come with me to the student council room. Isn't it kind of weird that she'd only want to talk to him? Eh, probably big, important student council business. Maybe, but Senpai was acting a little weird. She had that look she gets when she's keeping some terrible secret. Ah, you worry too much. Well, guess we might as well head home. Hey, wait a sec, Junpei. According to the seating chart, if he's not here, you have to take over cleaning duty. Have fun sweeping the hallway. What? Since when? There's something you have to know. Do you remember Chidori, the girl who was with Strega? I don't mean to alarm you, but the truth is, there's a chance that she may wake up today. I know what you're going to say, and yes, we did see her die with our own eyes. However, a few days later, her body began to undergo transmogrification. For the past few weeks, she's been in a sort of stasis, neither living nor dead. I don't know. It may be related to her persona's abilities, but that's mere speculation. The reason I wanted to talk to you is... How do you think we should tell Iori? You see, she's probably... Yes, it's me. I see. Yes, I understand. That was the hospital. They say she's just awakened. It's hard to believe, but it seems that Chidori really has come back to life. Did I hear that right? Yori? Chidori is... Huh? Is this a joke? Some kind of trick? No, it's not a joke or a trick. She's currently recovering in the same hospital as before. But... Iori... She probably... Chidori... Chidori's... Alive? it's a moot point now but perhaps it's for the best that he found out this way i think i'll head to the hospital after this too could i ask you to come along huh junpei you took off that fast and you still haven't gone inside well i mean it's kind of we'll wait outside it wouldn't be good for all of us to charge in. I agree. Go on, Iori. You go in too. <gasps> Her damaged endocrine system and other internal organs have completely healed. She's still weak, but there's no more danger of her dying in two years. Chidori... Is it really you? I'm not dreaming. Am I? Dreaming? <laughs> it's true. It is you. Chidori... Uh, who are you? Huh? What? I thought so. Transmogrification is the proof that one lacks potential. I had a feeling this might be the case. This is Kirijo-san and Iori-kun. They were your friends last year. Friends? <sighs> My name is Jidori Yoshino. I'm sorry. It hasn't quite hit me yet, but... I guess I don't remember anything of the past few years. It's like... I was having a really long dream. Chidori... Yoshino... 
It seems all of her memories after she awakened to her persona are gone. She remembers everything that happened before then. But as for you all... <sighs> Iori... Nah... I think... It's better for her... That she doesn't remember. All that stuff about the fighting and... The suppressants... When you're having a nightmare... It's better... To be able to wake up. I didn't say it was a nightmare. Don't put words in my mouth. It was a dream of meeting a kind, warm person at the end of a long tunnel. I can't remember it clearly, but I wanted to make him happy. And I... I think... There were flowers. A room filled with them. Ugh. Chidori! Take it easy. Don't force yourself to remember. Flowers in a room. If she can remember that part clearly, then maybe... <gasps> Do you remember how she'd occasionally use her power to make flowers bloom again? She'd always do it for the flowers in her room on the days when Iori-kun would visit. And she would always spend more time on the flowers she received from you, Iori-kun. She never even looked at me when I brought them in, though. <laughs> now I see. Any flower she touched would be mysteriously preserved. I ended up keeping them all for my research, but after the autopsy, I put them all on her chest as a tribute. Now that I think about it, that must have been the night she began to transmogrify. The power to share one's life with others. Could she have reclaimed the life energy she'd given to those flowers? Well, it's no real proof, but compared to her previous state, she's changed. The loss of her power is part of it, but furthermore... Excuse me? Are you talking about me? We were talking about how you want to live now. Hmm? What do you mean by that? Of course I want to live. I have to find the person in my dream someday. I don't have time to lie in bed forever. Supposing you do find him, what will you do after that? Well... <sighs> that's none of your business. Chidori. The strength of two hearts connected brought about a miracle. Or, rather, a victory. No. <laughs> Chidori. Hey, hey. W why are you crying? I... I can't help it. I... I've... I've never been so happy in my entire life. <laughs> Have some self-control now. Let's go.
Yep, yep. Huh? Accepting a request? Oh my, you've already fulfilled. Marvelous. You must know. I will await a report of success. Very well. Seeing you. Don't detect the usual scent of the sea. Hmm. I'm sorry about the other day. I think my heart is growing closer to that of a human. But because of that, I've realized something. The heart and body are inseparable. A human heart can only function properly within a human body. Um, have you ever come here alone with someone else before? Perhaps you gazed out at the view together and spoke quietly. Oh, I didn't mean to pry. I was just curious. What? But I'm only shaped like a human. And besides, I'm a machine. <sighs> Actually, I've been a little worried. At school, I am seen as a human girl. I was concerned that if I stayed too close to you, it could cause a misunderstanding. If that is the case, please tell me right away. I wouldn't want to prevent you from becoming closer to another person. <sighs> the view from up here is beautiful. That must be why I sometimes see couples alone up here after school. They might be leaning against one another, or embracing. I never gave it a second thought before, but lately, it pains me to see them. I think I've come to realize that this is the kind of connection I can never have. As my heart grows more and more human, it only becomes clearer how much sets us apart. Just because my heart is developing doesn't mean I can actually become human. I've known this since the beginning, yet... I'm sorry, I lost control of myself again. But I still care about you, and that won't ever change, no matter what happens.
Even I find it strange. Why do I feel this way? Why are you so important to me? This is... love? <sighs> oh, so that's it. I finally understand. They have another wish. One just as important as my desire to live. But I know that this is something that I can never have. Let's go home. clear winter day seems stronger than it is during the summer? Perhaps it's because the sun is lower in the sky, and you don't have to look up to see it. I've gotten so used to this view, but no two times is it ever exactly the same. You could say the same thing about one's day to day, and to each life as well. The promised day is almost here. January 31st. Whenever I come up here, I get lost in my thoughts. I can't let it end like this. I want to protect it all. Thoughts like that. Since last time, I've tried thinking things through more rationally. I thought about that old lady and Michan-san. And Kiyoshi-san as well. I wonder if Michan-san was alone until the moment of her death. Somewhere no one could find her. I think the old lady wanted to be there for her at the end. To live means to be connected to other people. But life is finite. Farewells are unavoidable. It's sad to think about. But you and I will have to part one day as well. And then... I'll never be able to see you again. There are so many things in life I don't understand filled with so much pain. You meet others, forge relationships, and spend time with them. And then, they're gone, leaving you behind, leaving you alone. <sighs> when I think about that, I just can't hold back my feelings. But I understand now. That's just how it is. No two views are alike. No two days are the same. It's natural for everything to disappear, re-emerge, and constantly change. Life is both short and finite. That's what makes it so invaluable, and why one feels that it must be cherished. When you think about it, it's a miracle that two given people are able to ever meet in this chaotic flow of time and space. I believe that's why we find happiness in forging bonds and relationships with others. And it might be the true joy of being alive. It can be sad, but at the same time so warm. Beautiful because it is destined to end. And that's why I mustn't hesitate any longer. I need to tell you, even if this wish of mine is to never come true, I still want to tell you my true feelings. <sighs> um, I... I love you. I know I'm a machine. I know that I cannot truly touch you as a human. But I can't help it. All I can see or think about is you. I 
love you so much that I feel like I'm going to break down somehow. I'm sorry. I can't think of anything to say. Perhaps something really has broken inside of me. I feel so happy. to look you in the eye right now. Um, see you later. Oh, it's you. Welcome back. getting a little greener every day, don't you think? For an amateur vegetable patch, it's really coming along. All that back-breaking work was worth it. Listen, you hear that? That's the sound of our precious little veggies cheering us on. Right? They're kind of growing on me. This might actually be my calling. Maybe I should just ride this wave and start a farm or something. It's really cool how well they respond if you take care of them right. It's one of those times where you see the fruits of your labor after lots of slow, steady work. I never followed through on anything, and even I pulled it off. That counts for something, right? <laughs> I thought I was the one raising them. Maybe they were raising me all along. Wait, did real, actual wisdom just come out of me? Holy crap, I grew up more than I thought. We owe a lot to our nutritious little veggie babies. Ah, who am I kidding? Our veggie mentors. Well, whatever we do in life, you can't expect to hit a home run on the first swing. We gotta stay on our toes and wait for the perfect chance to strike. And when that time comes, you knock it out of the park. That's how the real sluggers do it. A valuable lesson straight from our vegetable teachers. Don't go forgetting it, you hear? Maybe I'm finally figuring this whole life thing out, huh? You know, I think I'll write a book. I could call it something like Life's a Vegetable Garden, the Junpei Yuri story. Selling books and vegetables? Ooh, we're gonna be rolling it though. Man, am I a genius or what? All right, enough dreaming. Let's get a little bit more work done. We did a heck of a job. See you later, my darling veggies. I'll be back again when I'm free. Well, let's call it a night. Hit me up again when you have some time. Hey, it's 
surprised to see you out here. It's freezing. Oh, yeah. Career consultation's tomorrow, isn't it? You know what you're gonna say? At the very least, tell them what they want to hear. Miss Toriyumi's pretty scary when you piss her off. Every time I fall asleep in class, she demands I apologize with a more and more expensive cake. Dude, you gotta hear me out. So, what do you think? I mean, I'm pretty much set on going to college after graduating. I heard some people aren't planning on doing anything at all. No college, no job. They just don't want to put the effort in, I guess. I know it's a pain, but I think they've got it all wrong. I actually kind of like the way things are, you know? Oh, you agree with me, boy? <laughs> like you actually understand what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm gonna head out. <sighs> I'd better buy a cake just in case.